Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. And in today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at what is Z-Wave. Now Z-Wave is a wireless protocol that's relatively popular across the smart home and home automation world. And that's because, well, it's an interesting network for connecting different devices together. And that's because it operates as a mesh network along with a few other pros and cons that come with Z-Wave. And I'll dive a little bit deeper into that later on in this video. Now, when you're getting into smart home, there's a lot of options. You have Wi-Fi devices, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Wave, 433 megahertz, and infrared. And there's a few other smaller protocols also on the market that you might have seen or come across. Now, there are different, let's say, advantages to each network, but there are also different disadvantages to each one. So when you're building a smart home, it is sort of important to have a look at what wireless protocol you're building it on. Now, I should point out that Homey Pro and Homey Bridge have most of the wireless communication protocols built in. So you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z-Wave, 433 megahertz, and infrared all in these devices. So you don't really need to think about it too much, but it is important to know the pros and cons for each different network and why you should, let's say, expand your smart home on a certain network. And that's often to do with that mesh networking. And I'll dive into that on my whiteboard in a little bit, just to explain how that works and how a system like that is put together. Now I've brought a couple of smart home brands that work with Z-Wave, just to illustrate my point. Aotech is one of these, and they have a couple of cool devices. So they have wall modes, they have built-in modules, they have plugs, they have bulbs, they have all kinds of different smart home devices, and they all have a unique take on the design and the different ways that they work with your smart home. And on the other side, I have Fibaro, also mostly running on Z-Wave, and they have also a wide variety of different devices with different designs, different characteristics. And Fibaro has a few of our favorite devices. So the Fibaro motion sensor is one that I would highly recommend, along with the Fibaro plug that does energy metering as well. Those are reliable and stable devices that work quite well for a smart home. So before I dive further into Z-Wave, I actually wanna quickly mention a few of the other technologies. So you have Wi-Fi. We're all pretty familiar with Wi-Fi over the last 20 years. Everyone's been getting routers in-house, connecting their mobile devices, laptops, computers, up to your Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is a good stepping stone to get into smart home, but it comes with a few drawbacks. Wi-Fi devices are very power consuming, which often means that they have to be plugged in or always on devices. And that means, you know, inbuilt modules, you have a lot of lights that are based on Wi-Fi connections, uh, you have plugs that are based on it. But when you're looking at battery powered remotes, or motion sensors or door window sensors. Battery powered devices are often not made for Wi-Fi. So then we're looking at different technologies. And then Zigbee should be mentioned here. Now Zigbee is very comparable to Z-Wave. It's also a mesh network. However, it runs on the same bandwidth as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's 2.4 gigahertz. And if you've ever had problems with your Wi-Fi range, well then you'll know that the range of 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is not that big. And that's a drawback for Zigbee devices since they have a lower range operating that 2.4 gigahertz, which also means that you have some interference or could have some interference from your Wi-Fi. Now Z-Wave runs in a different bandwidth. It actually runs at 868 megahertz in Europe and 906 in the US. And that means that you have a larger range for each Z-Wave device. And that's quite important if you have a large home or like I said, multiple stories, a lot of thick walls, thick concrete insulation materials between your Z-Wave devices. That longer range can definitely help penetrate, you know, those obstacles. You know, there are a few more advantages to Z-Wave. The protocol as a whole is relatively standardized and that's done by the Z-Wave Alliance. Now they've standardized the protocol, which means that a lot of the devices have an easier time communicating with each other. So if you're cross shopping, let's say these two different brands here, Aotech and Fibaro, the devices can actually connect and mesh easier with each other. Another advantage is the power consumption. Z-Wave has a lower power consumption, which means sleeker or thinner design devices with longer battery life. Hey guys, while editing this video, I realized that I actually didn't do a great job of setting you up with the basics of a network. So I wanna jump in right here 
before we get onto a Z-Wave mesh network and the details on that, and tell you a little bit about how a standard network is set up. And by standard, I mean a Wi-Fi network. Let's take that as an example. These are often referred to as hub and spoke or star networks. And there's a reason for that. And I'll just illustrate to you how they're set up. So your router device is often a box. And this hub or router can connect to various devices around your home. So I'm just gonna draw a few little devices here. For instance, this would be a laptop. Over here, we'll have a smart speaker. Set up over here. Oh, oh. Phone. And if you have, for example, Homey Pro or Homey Bridge, then these are connected to your Wi Fi. So, and perhaps a few other devices connected to your Wi Fi. Well, you'll see it looks a bit like a star because each device connects to your hub or router for your Wi-Fi connection. Now, if you find yourself trying to connect to it outside of the range, let's say I'm out in the backyard or up in the attic. Now, we've all had that problem where we just don't have the Wi-Fi signal or signal strength to be able to connect to the network. And that's because your range of this network is actually limited by your hub and router. And simply put, you can't connect if you're outside that range. So that's what a standard network looks like. Now a mesh network works a little bit different. So you'll have a coordinator device. That's often your Homey Pro or Homey Bridge. You'll have router devices. These are always powered on devices. And then you'll have end devices or end nodes, which can communicate into that chain. And it works just like a chain. So you do have your coordinator, can send and receive signals to router devices, but those router devices they can send and receive signals to each other and to other end devices. So it's a lot easier to improve the stability, the range, and to basically build on that network by adding in more and more router devices and you're creating a mesh. Now I'll let past Alex actually go into that in detail and he'll show you what that looks like on the whiteboard here. Now a mesh network all starts with a coordinator and I'll draw a coordinator for you here. Now you might recognize the form of that. That's Homey Pro. The coordinator is the device that basically regulates and sends out and receives the messages happening in a mesh network. So it's an important feature of that network. And if you're watching this video, you likely already have Homey Pro or Homey Bridge at home. And both of these come with Z-Wave chips installed. And in the case of Homey Bridge, you actually have three different types for each region where Z-Wave is active. And that means that you're set if you're in Europe, in the US, or in Southeast Asia. Now I'm using Homey Pro to illustrate this, but it'll work exactly the same way on your Homey Bridge. Z-Wave mesh networks actually have two different types of devices. And I've got two different colors for that. So I've got a blue, and I'll draw a router device. And you might recognize that as a light bulb. Now there's a reason that I've picked a light bulb as the router device, but I'll get into that in a second. First, let's draw the other type of device, and that's an end device, or also known as an end node. So let me draw a battery-powered button. Now this is an end device. Now I've got two devices connected to my homie, and you'll maybe have noticed the main difference between the two. The light bulb is always powered. So a smart bulb should always be powered because you're controlling it either via your app, via connected flows with buttons, but it's always on and always connected to power, which is important. That means that it can act as a router device extending your mesh network. And your end device being battery powered, well, this isn't used to extend the signal. It basically, when it receives a signal like a button press, it will send that information either to a router or directly to your coordinator. And it will not send signals to other devices, so it doesn't extend your network. Now, that's an important difference. So if you're looking at extending your Z-Wave network within it, your home, you should be placing router devices or always on devices in areas, let's call them black zones, or in areas where you don't have good signal. 
So if you're installing an end device, a battery powered Z-Wave device in your attic, you're gonna want a couple of router devices in between that and the homey you might have on your ground floor. So let me add a few more devices into this smart home here, just to illustrate my point. You might have a smart plug. Now you'll notice I've drawn the plug in blue. That's because it is a router device. And again, this can connect to other routers or directly to your coordinator and even connect to an end device. Now you'll see already it's starting to become a bit of a mesh. Now let me draw another device. Let's say you have a motion sensor. And I'm gonna put this, actually I'll, I'll put this all the way up here, up here in the top right. Now you'll notice I specifically drew the motion sensor in red. Again, it's a battery powered end device. So this one, let's say it doesn't reach Homey Pro. So I've placed this in an area where the Z-Wave range of my Homey is not reaching. Well, luckily I've got a router device, this light bulb placed in between. And that means that via that router, my end device can communicate with my coordinator and I'll be receiving signals, being able to send signals, and basically it'll work in that mesh network, even if it doesn't reach your coordinator. What's great about this is that you're able to create a larger network than what Homey Pro and the range that's built into it, into its Z-Wave chips can reach because you're adding these router devices. Now I can expand on this a little bit more and create a real mesh. Let me get to drawing. Now I've added a few devices to my mesh network. Contact sensor, remote, water sensor. Now that water sensor is unfortunately out of the range of my coordinator and these two router devices I have. So to solve that problem, we can add in another router device somewhere in between the coordinator or another router device and that water sensor. So let's do that. Now you also have built-in modules if you're updating, let's say existing lighting systems, to be smart, you can add a built-in module behind, let's say the wall button to then make it a smart light. And these are also often router devices because they're always on. Now, fortunately that module being a router can connect to my coordinator and bridge the connection over to the water sensor. And again, I can strengthen my mesh network with all of the different devices in range of that router. Now that's the basics of a mesh network. You have a coordinator device, router devices, and end devices. And end devices, they don't act to strengthen your network, whereas router devices being always powered are able to strengthen that network and extend the range. Z-Wave comes with a couple more unique advantages. One, it has a relatively high security standard and encryption level. Two, it has pretty premium and well-tested products because they all have to be certified by the Z-Wave Alliance. And, well, let's not forget about some of the cons. Now, the premium price, the high encryption level, the mesh networking, all comes at a relatively high price point. And you'll notice that in the smart home market, across the board, Z-Wave devices are often a little bit more expensive than their Zigbee counterparts but you do get the advantages that I mentioned earlier. Also in part due to those stricter restrictions and stricter testing and higher costs, there is a less selection of Z-Wave devices on the market. So if you're really looking for unique devices in certain spots, in certain situations, you might need to look to different wireless technologies in order to cater to that. Now that should answer the question of what is Z-Wave. And I should suggest I have a video on Fibaro devices, so you can make sure to check that out. I'll add a link up in the top left or down in the description below. And I've probably got a video coming out soon about AOTech devices. So make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get notified when we release a new video. Now, before you go, I did want to show off the pairing process for a Z-Wave device. So let me quickly just jump into that. I'm going to put the whiteboard to one side, grab the phone, and let's pair up the Fibaro motion sensors as this is a sort of highly recommended product. 
Now I'm here in the Homey app. Let's add a device. Obviously search for the brand name and then select the device you're looking to pair. Now every device comes with unique pairing instructions specific to that device. So just go through the instructions. Let's see, press the button three times on my motion sensor. You'll see that I get a check mark. We move on to step two, and I've got to press the button on your Fabaro motion sensor three times again. Now, if you have some new devices at home and you're looking for pairing instructions, I actually have a whole playlist on how to connect devices up to Homey. And hopefully the device you're looking for is in that playlist. So make sure you search for that on the Homey channel. Now, as soon as the device is connected, you'll see it appear here on my devices screen. Now, if you've been watching this far, you'll know what type of device that is in your Z-Wave mesh network. That's right, it's an end device. Now, don't think that just because this is a Z-Wave device, it can only talk with Z-Wave devices. That's not true. If you're using Homey as a coordinator, it has the other wireless frequencies built into it, so you can connect to different types of devices, which means that if you have a Zigbee ball, like the one I have inside this lamp here from Ikea, which is an Ikea bulb running on Zigbee, I can actually create a flow that links up my Z-Wave motion sensor to my Zigbee bulb. Now, this is the moment I'll remind you that because this bulb is Zigbee, it's not acting as a router device for that end device, right? You'll need to add a Z-Wave light or a Z-Wave built-in module or a Z-Wave plug if you're placing this Fabaro motion sensor far away from your coordinator. Now let's set up a really simple flow for when that receives some motion, this light is turned on. So for the when card, I'm gonna head to Fabaro, select the motion sensor, and I'll select the motion alarm turned on. So this flow is triggered when that motion sensor detects motion. Under the then section, I'll head to this IKEA light. And I'm gonna say, let's turn it on. Now this is a really easy flow, but I wanna illustrate that you can create connections between different wireless protocols. So my Z-Wave motion sensor is gonna turn on my Zigbee lamp. And this can go a little bit further on Homey. You can connect that Z-Wave motion sensor to any other connected device that you have on Homey. So Wi-Fi, Bluetooth devices, Zigbee, uh, other Z-Wave devices, obviously, 433 megahertz and infrared, you can get them all using that one device. That makes it really easy to cross shop different devices that you're looking for. So to conclude the video, let's end with a little bit of smart home action. Just gonna wave my hand in front of the motion sensor and my light turns on. Now, motion sensors like this one are best paired with zone activity flows. And if you're interested in zone activity, I'll link a video up in the top left or down below in the description for you to check out and then I'll explain a little bit more what kind of flows you can create with a simple motion sensor or door window sensor. Now, I hope that you've learned something in this video and that I've answered a few of your questions on what is Z-Wave. Now, if you're looking for more information on the smart home, different devices, different ways to use Homey, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.